everybody We're to back. another episode of the Marshall Street Podcast. The Marshall Street Podcast. Marshall's done his hair. Mm-hmm. It's an exciting day for everyone. It's a big day. We got an excursion today. We do. Davey, where are we going? Um, I think we're going to... I've actually completely forgotten where we're going. <laughs> I wasn't listening. I don't listen to you very long. We are going to check out the, the Jungle Melbourne, Brothers at Evelyn Hotel. The Melbourne Hip Hop Festival. Yeah. There's a there's a panel discussion there um, in the day. I think they just got a whole heap of fucking bands. Jungle Brothers are there. Should be pretty fucking sick. I'm excited. Yep. I got my excursion form signed. I'm ready. <laughs> got my packed lunch. We got Davey to sign a form. <laughs> <laughs> His mum said no. We begged her. She said, oh, all right. Actually, just before we get too into this, Davey, can you show everyone that mug? Oh, yeah. I was specifically told not to show people this mug. This so, thing is fucking hilarious. My girlfriend's roommate got <laughs> mugs made of her. <laughs> and now this is my work mug. And now it's on the internet forever. <laughs> Love it. You're welcome, Madison. <laughs> So today's topic is what makes a good live show? Yeah. So we're going to go through things that I guess we, each of us think makes a good live show um, and what the internet tells us makes a good live show, (laughs) which could be interesting. I'm on it. (laughs) What about what makes a bad show? Can we mention that? Do you want to start with that? That's actually a good idea. Yeah. Mm, Bad shows. Bad shows is when um, the... Singer or whoever's talking on the microphone apologizes for everything. They're like, you know, oh, you know, sorry, sorry that sounded like shit or sorry that was a bad, bad version of that song or yeah. some sh- Like, I hate that. Yeah. Like, yep. it's like, just fucking yeah. own it. If Play it sucks, it, deliver it who with cares? fucking confidence. Actually, and one thing I hate is when effects or auto tune is still on when they're talking in between songs. <laughs> <laughs> the reverb that sounds yeah. like they're in a tunnel Bert from the used at Taste of Chaos probably in like 2007 or something in between each track like he'd be talking he'd talk and then there's just all this fucking it sounded a lot like auto-tune I'm sure he's got something in his voice but his actual talking in between songs just would, just would put you off so much that you are just like man I can't really enjoy this anymore yeah uh, I I really dislike these days is a, like a, a thing where Bands are putting, you know, second guitars and backup vocals in in the backing track, and I can't stand it. I mean, I get it; like, it makes the song sound fuller, but th- it's just the the modern thing. Like, it pisses me off. See, now this is a good. It. We can get into a good debate about this because I agree. And I was talking with someone recently. I was even going down the discussion of like, if if you're a three piece band, we're listening to their album, and the all the tracks were clearly written to be played with like five pieces. Like you're writing songs that have two fucking guitars and bass drum and you're a three piece. So it's like one, either live, if you're going to play as your same lineup, you can't, you have to do it with fucking backing tracks or you take other musicians out on tour with you, which I'm fine with. Costs more money. I get that. Yep. But then now, and then in hip hop, when it's just a fucking MC, we played with dudes, big dudes who are legit and their whole tracks are fucking Just lyrics are in there. Full. Their choruses yep. are in there. Like they literally kind of chime in with fucking with words. I mean, they do most of their verses, but if you, I've heard them on soundcheck when they're not saying anything and I'm like, fuck dude, this There's was the so live set you played on, yeah. last night. Like yep, <laughs> you could, you could not identical. say a word. And I get it. This, there's a consistency thing. Like bands want to be good. They want to like make sure that they have a reliable sort of, Thing and definitely a backing track is much more reliable than four different instruments. But I, f- I feel like if, if you can't do it live, then you shouldn't put it in the recording. I don't know. It's, it's controversial, but I agree, you know, sound effects and shit. I'm totally <laughs> cool with sound effects. Like, you know, if there's like a bass drop or something like that, sweet. But if it's an extra guitar or a backup vocal, yep. Fuck me. Just get a, another person to be on stage with you really yep. no i agree there's logistical things Davey, to it what that is, I mean? like, I, what, my thoughts on that is that is like you have to be in the industry to like even fucking notice that shit. people don't notice that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the other thing that's, the that's, only people who notice and get angry about it are dudes who yeah, i guess don't matter yeah. like in the big scene shit what we think doesn't affect uh, their fucking live show because it's the crowd if they like it and that's and then that's where you come in fuck if the crowd loves it it's good who I'm going to be perfectly honest, anything? like anything that happens on stage, if I like, I like, I can hear noises that I don't understand where they're coming from. Yep. But I really, I don't, I don't it doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah, matter to me. <laughs> yeah. I know. See, I'm that kind in the crowd who sits there and analyzes it I doesn't f- have a good time because I'm like, who's doing this? What the fuck is that sound? <laughs> I am so critical. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Sitting in the back, 
<laughs> Rain manning it. Yeah. Uh, does this ever th- th- this other thing ever happen to you, Marshall, where you get band envy? I coined the term myself. It's um, a good term. When you're watching a band and you're like, I don't know what it means. I just want to be on stage, man. Oh yeah. I just want to. I just want to be up there. Oh yeah. Either because I'm like, I would do that differently, or I'm just like, fuck, I'd love to play. <laughs> like, yeah. just love to jump on the drums right now. Yep. Band envy. That's a good term. Band envy. Yep. All right. So, what is the quintessential terrible performance? We've got instruments okay. in the backing track. Um. Yeah. Just a lack of confidence. Like person holding the mic into the monitor so it feeds back you know like looking at the ground all the time not interacting with the crowd just the general lack of confidence and you know that comes with time the more you play the better you get some 41 i saw them at festival hall Mm. and i remember walking away going that drummer the drummer who's it's like fucking cone 32 or some shit yeah i don't know yeah i walked away going that drummer had no interest playing that set. Yeah. Like he had his head down. I don't think he even looked at the crowd. He had his head down. He was literally going through the motions. Derek was all right. He's just the front man who does what he needs to do. I think Browntown had left at this point. Mm. And like I was watching the drum. I'm like, you do not even want to fucking be on stage, let alone be on the other side of the country. And yeah. you can tell. You can pick up on it. Yeah, that I, that is something that someone who has no fucking idea what's going on, like in a music standpoint, I do see shitty performances it's this this underconfidence but i also fucking find that overconfidence is just as bad mm, so yep, i went and yep. saw kanye at big day out when like ages ago i went to that i got yeah. vip you got vip in that oh wow geez right. wait, wait a name drop <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i'm a cool cunt what can i say so kanye came, was late came onto the stage late he was yeah fucking did like one song spent like 10 minutes just like essentially lecturing the crowd and then like did another couple of songs, then did it again. That. And he ran like 45 minutes overtime and like was just That's Kanye. You could yeah, you could feel how much of a fuck he is. Wait. <laughs> that was that was I thought that show was awesome. I was having a great time. I was fucking yeah. What year is I don't this? Know, what played is this again? I think it was like about 2011, 2010. Okay, 20, no, earlier. no later than Yeah, 2011, 2012 maybe. Yeah, no, it couldn't nah. have been twenty. It had to be earlier than that. It was, so was that nah, like that dark, it was dark twisted fantasy? That was a pretty decent oh, right. album with Runaway. Yeah, that's that's his best album in my opinion. It's a cracking album. Okay. Situation. Nah, nah, man. Dark twisted fantasy. Is, so what is makes his is his album? What makes a good performance? Um. Well, heaps of stuff. I, I guess kind of the opposite of those things. Crowd engagement. Crowd engagement. Yeah. No. In like, one way or another, you know, you don't have to talk too much. In between songs, the, the, like, like I saw Arctic Monkeys after their second album, I think, um, and he didn't talk much, but when he talked, he like, it was like always funny. He like just had something like quirky to say about either what they were doing in Melbourne or, you know, something that had happened on tour or the way the crowd was reacting or something like that. And it was just like, he'd, he'd say like one or two sentences And it would be hilarious. And then he'd go back to playing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people kind of generally go, oh, they didn't talk at all. And it's like, you don't have to if if what you say has an impact. Yep. But it's it's there to do a job. Like, you're there to see the music, but you don't want to feel like these guys are out of of their comfort zone on stage. mm -hmm. Like, you can tell a band that's been fucking touring for years and they're just super comfortable with each other. Their band in between songs isn't forced. Um, And then you can tell bands who... I've kind of been structured around who mm. the band is. I think even this year at fucking Falls, Interpol played before Hoods. And Interpol are fucking big band. Yeah. They've been around for a long time. They're very yeah. respected. Their live show was fucking boring. And there was no crowd there. That yeah. like that the amount of people watching them was directly related to how kind of bored they look live. Yeah. And it was very much I'm like, fuck dude, the like the only only the lead singer had a mic. Other dudes weren't even interested in kind of talking, being part of the set. They were just playing. There's like, man, 25 years ago, you guys were fucking dominant. And like now it's kind of like you're going through the motions because of how big the fucking band is. I think um, when you mentioned Hilltop Hoods, I was actually going to mention their big day out set um, at that same year that Kanye played. Fuck, it was huge. It was one of the best sets I've seen. There's there's two dudes and a DJ on stage, Mm -hmm. like two MCs and a DJ on stage. Fuck, every song, they just did something different. Like one song, they might have got them, the crowd to clap. 
The next song, they would have got them to do a call and response type thing. The next song, they would have got them to wave. Like they just had something in each song that they knew exactly what they were going to do in that part. And they were like, yep. Confidence. Huge. They just went, we need you guys to do this. We need you guys to do this. Same thing I saw like art versus science. And they did the lame thing where they get you to like sit down on the floor. And then when the drop happens, you jump, jump up and jump around and shit. Yeah. And that's a pretty standard thing to do at a show. But they just did it with such confidence that everyone did it. Like I didn't even really enjoy their music that much, but I was like, I'm going to do this because it looks fun. Yep. You know, it's just about, it's just, if you're going to do something that is quirky or unique or whatever it is, you have to make sure that you do it with confidence. Yep. Because if you don't do it with confidence, the crowd's going to see you that. They're not going to do it. You smell bullshit a mile off. Yeah. And even on that on hoods, if anyone wants to check out, this is fucking possibly, I reckon their best live show. Um, Triple J live. What was it? Live at the, not live, live at the wild. Wireless, no, no, yeah. no. They're, um, what's the one they did in rural Australia? One night stand. Yeah. yeah. Triple oh, right, J yeah. one night stand in sale. Look up the Hoods' set from that. It's all on YouTube. It's in like different blocks. Each song, you can literally watch their whole set and fuck me dead. Like from when they come They're out, just so on. it's scripted, man, to a T. Yeah. Like when they bounce, this guy's up when he's down. It's not like, oh man, put your hands to the one side and the other dude's uh, off. Right, like, yeah, yeah fucking yeah. on. Another and band I, like that. God damn it, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say they're the, I'd say uh, they're the only hip hop group that could play arenas. Like the only Australian hip hop crew that could comfortably play arenas. Yep. Like they fill a big stage. Yep. There are some dudes you check them out at a local fucking stage and you're like, man, you've got four guys on a b tiny stage and you make this feel empty. Yep. Like they managed to take two dudes and yep. fill up a fucking 50 meter stage. There's so many bands that I could rattle off that just have a great live show. Um, Green Day. Fucking I've huge. talked about them in the, one of the last podcasts, but um, man, again, scripted, but... It doesn't matter. Like, and it doesn't feel scripted because they deliver it with such confidence. Sure, they say the same thing every show they play. And for me, I'd probably get bored, but it's reliable at the same time. Like if I, I, I picture myself, if I was playing that gig and I was like, you know, the drummer would do the same thing every show, you know, fucking hell. So <laughs> just for continuity issues, uh, uh, GoPro just fell off its mound. <laughs> It's something that we can be reliant on in every one of our podcasts is that the GoPro will fall down. Yep. <laughs> now, um, you know, like you just, it, I, I, I kind of went, you know, in my head, I'd be like, oh, I, I'd potentially get bored doing that same shit every single time, but it wouldn't matter because the crowd, well, you change you'd it respond up. to the crowd and you'd be like, fuck See, these guys. Going on that, going on like the same show done over and over again, like not really changing their music or like much, like they release a single mm. every now and again. Um, but client liaison, their live shows are always, always fucking mm. like top notch. They're always like entertaining. They've always got something new going on. Yeah. And like that scripted kind of like performance that they do together. Mm. Those guys have that shit down pat. Like, yeah. Like Mohatem, they're good at what they fucking do. There's a few, few other bands that I, that have memorable things about them. There's a band called Zebrahead from America and they have, Fuck, that's a good name. They have a guy who is a bartender who doesn't play any instruments, but he has like a tiki cocktail bar set up on stage and he just serves drinks to whoever they invite up on stage. Like they'll that invite people to awesome. a crowd. That is a fucking that great is idea. That is awesome. And he'll just like make making cocktails, like shaking cocktails and shit on stage. If we, if we start a Marshall Street band, Davey, can you be our bartender? Oh, yeah. I would fucking love to. Yeah. We should start a Marshall Street band. Yeah. Down the line, we will. Another, another fucking act that did something really similar, but different and just equally as awesome it was a band called Masked Intruder, right? Masked Intruder, <laughs> their theme about their band is that they are masked intruders. Like, and they all wear a different color and they all have their fucking balaclavas on and all of their songs are about like committing crimes. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> and they have a cop on stage that like, when I saw him, he stood like this, like just like, for four songs. The first four songs didn't move, just like analyzing the crowd. <laughs> Looked like a security guard. And then all of a sudden, he just jumped into the crowd and started getting people amped up and like making them dance and shit. Fuck, it was so funny, man. I was loving life. I'm like, what is this dude doing on stage? And then all of a sudden, he just starts amping the crowd up. It was it's fucking kinda like, awesome. It reminds me of um old fucking Public Enemy, like Professor Griff and yeah. their whole thing, their whole kind of military that they would roll out on yeah, the right, stage with. Yeah. 
man, fucking, it's just, so it, I will never forget that show just because of that. And like, I don't listen to their music, but I remember that band. So that's an interesting point right there. You don't listen to their music, but you'll never ever forget that show Correct. simply because they were that fucking awesome. It's just memorable. Yeah. It's just something that you remember. Actually, I saw Bowling for Soup open for, what was Tom's, um, Plus 44. I reckon they opened for no, plus forty four. The only time plus forty four came out was another unwritten law. That's it. And who Festival was Hall. and who else was on that? No, oh maybe bowling for soup were on there. I think it was them. Anyway, it was one of the blink site. It was either like Angels and Airwaves or Plus Forty Four, but Angels Travis didn't come. Airwaves. But they opened and they covered um, that yeah. America Fuck Yeah. Oh yeah. And it was huge. Like <laughs> <laughs> like great version of it. Nailed them like I knew I know nineteen eighty five, their one yeah. track and I was like That's a cover, did you realise? No way. Yeah. Band Bullshit. called SR seventy one wrote that song. No and way. They, and they released it only a year earlier. They did that track, um, Kick Me When I'm High. Kiss Me When I'm Maybe, why, yeah. why don't you always kick me when yeah. I'm high. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Oh, there Knock you go. We, we see Ida. Uh, yeah. Right, so they sang 1985. Yeah, that's their song. That is their song. <laughs> and yeah, that, it was only written like an, a year earlier. And then I'm guessing Bowling for Soup just went up to him and went, hey, this is a great song. Do you reckon they even asked Do you them? mind if we play it? No, they would have. Yeah? Yeah, 100%. Do you know Nat Natalie Imbruglia Torn? They would have gotten paid so much fucking royalties for that. Torn, yeah, Natalie Imbruglia is a cover. Yeah, it's this like alt rock band in the, like 1996. And the best they ever did band. was let her cover it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's such such a better version. Yeah. The original version is really weird. We could, do like, a whole, we could do a whole talk on covers. And, yeah. And, and tracks that are but covers we should. that people we should didn't realize. A, a, yeah, we will. We will do yeah, a will. talk on covers because covers are a really cool thing that a band can do. And to, even that medley you guys played on the weekend, that was yeah. sick. Yeah. Are you interested in what the internet has to say about performances live? Please. Yeah, let's, let's do okay. that. So... Davey's our uh, research guy. He's got a, a computer with him. He's, he's been looking some stuff up. He's a fact so, checker. So I've tell found, us what the uh, internet says about I've, what makes a good live show. I've found this list and it's the four P's of playing live shows. Um, <laughs> the first one is passion, uh, which is pretty standard stuff. And then the second one is spontaneity, which starts with an S. So <laughs> <laughs> this is already the best list. Uh, the third one is include the audience, which starts with an I. Um, <laughs> what is the P's here? Yeah. And then there is no fourth one. <laughs> There's just no fourth one. <laughs> what? Who? There's no fourth one. So we've got where the one the, where P. Where are the P's? We've got <laughs> the one P, the one S, and the one I. Of... Is there a summary or does it it's, sum well, it, up it, why it's the four P's? Or? It explains that stuff and then it just goes into ask your fans and record the show to get feedback. I don't understand Actually, the P's. Actually, that, that's a good one. Recording shows. A lot, of, uh, a lot of people don't do it. I reckon it's the best thing. You cannot analyze how yep. you look and how you, uh, yep. like how we, would you feel about yourself if you were watching, watching yourself yep. live? And also, because when you're playing, you're so hyped up on the fucking adrenaline and the emotion, everything's going yep. on. You've worked it up in your head so much that you're going to fucking lie to yourself about certain parts. Yep. If you watch back the footage, especially in a group, if you guys are in a band and you all watch it and you have a really good environment where you guys can talk openly to each other about what was good and bad, if you guys are open to that feedback, fuck, man, there's nothing more... Crucial. Yeah, and yep. and humbling because, fuck, it tears you down. You're like, fuck, yep. dude, I thought I was good. Really, I look shit. That's uncomfortable. Yep. I need to change how I focus this. Yep. And 100%. Like, and it's, it really tears you down. But then, so you can build yourself back up to be a fucking better act. Absolutely, you gotta, you've got to be critical. Mm -hmm. It's it's super important to criticize in in a constructive way. You you can't learn unless you learn from failure most of the time. Hundred percent. Like that's probably the best way to learn is is by going. Okay, I am not very good at X, Y, Z, whatever yep. it might be. Um, whether that's singing in tune, even yep, like you know, and, and it's fine. Like. Recon recognizing that you're shit at something now or you're not as good doesn't mean you're going to be shit forever. It means you just got to fucking learn it and tweak it. Like that's one thing people don't yeah. realize. Like, oh man, you're shit at this. Cool. You're not going to be shit at it in two years if you keep practicing. Yeah, the other thing that you'll do by, by doing that is you'll actually see things that you didn't realize that you were good at. You know, it might be a power stance or something yeah. like that. You might be like, fuck, I didn't realize to do that. I'm yeah, going to yeah. do that more often. Correct. It's like, oh man, that looked really natural when I did that. And the lead singer is over that side. Like, fuck, let's make yep. sure we do that again. Cause that looked really good. Now you've, you've brought something else to my attention is when I see newfound glory live, they always do this thing. And I don't really ever see any other bands do it. Like they're four dudes now. They used to be a five piece, but when they went to a four piece, they really worked on kind of their stage presence and shit. 
and um, they play on small stages. They're not a huge band. They don't play stadium shows or anything like that. You know, they might play big festivals, but generally they're playing club shows, right? Um, so the what they do is any time it's only the two guitarists. Maybe it's yeah. So the guitarist and the bassist, they basically are always aware of each other's um, stance in the crowd. So on the stage, sorry. So when one of them steps back, the other one will step forward. Yeah. And then when one of them crosses over this side, the other one goes over the other side. And they've constantly got an awareness, a spatial awareness of where each other are so that they're never both standing back. They're never both turning back to the drummer. Like if one's here, the other one's there. Like it's super, it's super cool. And I, and it kind of, I don't know whether it's good that I noticed that you potentially want to not notice that sort of thing, but I think it's probably because I'm attuned to yeah, yeah. Like you, you, people's presence on stage yeah. and stuff. So, Hmm. Yeah, client liaison do that sort of stuff where they'll like they'll randomly do side steps across the stage, mm. but they'll always be perfectly in sync and they don't like line up anything at mm. all. Like you'll just see them one will start sidestepping, they'll all just fall in line with mm. that. Mm. I thought that was really good. Same with um Gang of Youth. Like they're a bit rock kind of stuff. Um they're kind of like, you know, very like rock and roll, very like kind of sort of running around the stage a lot, but you can see that they're all interacting with the audience whenever they're doing their thing. They're never like all of them bunched up or, yep. you know. They know what's happening. They're, it's yeah, a polished like, show. Yeah, it's a poli- Yeah, exactly. It's a polished show yep. and you can you, tell. You can tell when people actually give a fuck about that stuff and when they're, when they're like, oh, we'll just let it all, we'll wing it and see what happens. Like, even when we used to play, we used you to You guys have, used to be good life. We, but we used to, like, the level we'd script shit, it, it looked off the cusp. Like, in between songs, we'd be like, okay, in between this song and this song, we'll talk about whatever city we're in. So if we were fucking on tour, we'd be like, okay, I know between this song and this song, Mm -hmm. we're going to mention something about the city we're in and something that happened that day. They could be two spontaneous things. Like, fuck, remember when you went to the bar this morning and did that fucking shooey? Like, that's off the cusp. But I knew something was coming about the city we're in and what happened that day. And then, like, we knew it when on certain beats, like on the one you'd put your hands up and then you'd cross over on this, like, even just walking to the other side of the stage, we knew when it was all happening. Yeah. It looked, and again, that was, that I was wouldn't, fucking I wouldn't have been able to tell. Because if you, yeah, it looks natural, but we, and it's just so that you, oh man, fuck, so like, I accidentally walked this way and then we got tangled up and you went that way. Like, we did that for ages and we're like, fuck, let's clean this shit up. Mm-hmm. We literally would break it down by verse by verse, fucking line by line. Super cool. Where are you going to be on the stage? If you're on a big stage, where are you going to be? All right, I'll walk to the front. I'll come out for, behind the decks on this part. We'll both be at the front of the stage and I'll drop back and you'll cross over. Like, yeah. it was just, it was just scripted. It was clean. There was a band that, uh, that was sort of a, indie sydney band um they're called bad pony um they've got like a like they're sick. yeah they're pretty good they've got this like quirk thing where like each one of them controls one section of the drum like they don't have a drummer they just have like that's right yeah so that's pretty cool Did they play with you i've never heard of them what's the band that sorry continue this what's the band that played with you one time at the curtain that didn't have a drummer because i think he left just before they toured and they split the drums up and played it between them no nah. yep I have played the curtain a couple of times, but I've never, I don't, no. Nah. They're like, Fuck. they're pretty like tied up with, um, we the people which turned into swim season. Yeah. It so might've been at that gig that I saw them. Yeah. So yeah, probably. Cause yeah, they've been around a few times, but they'd just done this big tour and the like bassist and the lead guitarist were like clearly pretty sick of each other, but <laughs> they like made it funny for the yeah, audience yeah, yeah. which was it was just like the best shit like the lead guitar snapped one of his strings halfway yeah. through a song and he goes yeah so we finished that song like with only with a missing string yeah you know so i hope that was okay for you guys yeah and then the, the bassist goes can you just do us all a fucking favor and snap the rest of them <laughs> <laughs> and then like the guitarist just goes like all right just goes into the next one <laughs> yeah. it's like starts like straight into the next song yeah man like i think like for a for a young band, I would say the important things to think about are your set list as well. You know, when yeah. you're playing certain songs, what songs are you starting and, and closing with? Um, you know, how do you introduce the band? Do you specifically say everyone's name or mm-hmm. do you, after in certain songs, introduce them when they're doing their own, you know, the drummer might do a drum fill and you'll just say like that person's name or something like that. Yep. Um, or you might 
in between songs, you might say, hey, give it up for so-and-so, it's their birthday today or some shit like that, you know, all that sort of stuff's really important. I mean, this is a, a controversial controversial thing, but it, it might not be as well, you know, do, do you talk about merch? Do you talk about, no. you know, um, you know, what, like all that sort of shit. Like, I think, I think merch is an important thing to talk about, I don't, but it's how you talk about it. I don't. Everyone, yeah. I think every fan is aware if they want to buy something, they'll, that there's a way for them to do it. I think your job on stage is to entertain and bring them the music so fucking well and everything that they listen to, if they listen to in the car or in the computer, you want to bring all of that in their head to life. Mm. And if you do that, a byproduct will be that they buy your shit. I don't think it's important to talk about social media and stuff like that because people will find no, that. No. But I think merch, I think merch is something that you can talk about, but it's how you do it. You might, I think like merch I'll, I'll, is, I'll, I want to do I'll a it podcast on Did merch. Did Green Day at any point during their American they, Media Tour I'm, mention merch? Yeah, but I'm not talking big bands. I'm talking about bands that are starting up that want to do full-time music. Yep, I, I think, think aspire to the guys you want to be like, though. Go, fuck, dude, let's put on a stadium show that rocks 50,000 mm. people and the merch will move itself. Yeah. That'd be, I don't know, there's a way. You, if again, you have specials mine. on merch, you, I reckon merch is something that I wouldn't mind doing a podcast on, but... I think there's cool ways to do merch as well rather than just for fucking someone standing at the back of the room selling T-shirts that you've screen printed yourself. Like, there's cooler ways to do it that I think would entice people to buy more shit and diff like amity amity dropped the same record like fucking eight times with eight different covers and eight different colored vinyls mm. and sold out of fucking every one of them yeah like they didn't write any new music they just fucking merged out better yeah merch we definitely got to do a podcast on but yep. um i don't know I, I think i think you can talk about it i think there's ways that you can you can talk about it i, think- I don't like the sob story part of it like some people will go Oh, please buy our merch because we traveled. It's like you chose to travel. <laughs> Don't fucking do that to me. I'm, that makes me want to buy it less. Yeah. Um, I guess my point in, in that is there's there's ways to not talk about merch. You know, if you're yeah. going to talk about Correct. merch, and, on and your if it's state, done tastefully, tastefully, it's not done in a forced sales environment. And yeah. you know, you can probably say, "Come see us at the merch table." That's a good way to That's introduce the merch. That's a good way to fucking test. do it. Yep. Yeah. And I like that about the fucking, the actual band scene and the alternative scene is they all hang out at the merch desk yep. to fucking hang out with them after. Yep. Super dope. Yeah. I feel like people know where merch is these yep. days. Like everyone knows that there's merch. Everyone knows like the routine. Mentioning it in the bad way, that's going to go on the bad performance thing. Like, yep. please buy our shit. We need the money. It's yep. like, fuck you. Like, yep. entertain me. Yeah. Um, if you're a part-time band, you don't need the money because like you're working. If you're a full-time band... Merch is a great way to to make your money because you're not going to make as much money on the actual payment of the show if you're just starting up as what you could make off merch. So um, merch is really important, but it, it's, it is how you say it. Yeah. That being said, like the younger generation of dudes, like if you're going to like that YouTube kind of sphere, like every fucking YouTube is just like constantly plugging their fucking merch. So younger yeah. audiences Again, there's clearly a way to don't do care. Yeah. You but know? I mean, it's like everything's like everyone's got a voice now, so the market every every aspect you could say is oversaturated. The market decides if your shit's good. Like if mm-hmm. you're fucking if your podcast or your YouTube or your band is that good, fuck dude, I guarantee you you will not help but sell shit. Mm. If you're plugging your shit all the time because you think because you're doing the podcast or your music, if you're doing that to fucking try to make money to selling shit, you'll get found out. Like yeah, you've gotta you gotta be creative in the ways you do it. There's there's it's too in your face if you just say buy this or oh, like shit. you know yeah anyway i reckon we we've gotten yeah, a little bit yeah, off topic yeah. so but it's good it's still part of the live show it is yeah and Even it's important. it just popped in my head let's just um take a quick tour of venues around melbourne what fucking venues do you like because i think festival hall although it's an iconic man the fucking beatles played on that stage yeah it fucking sounds horrendous they didn't upkeep it it, it, if, it, if it I sounds see, bad if, because it's a big rectangle like but it's also dilapidated as fuck. Like if I'm going to a gig there, I'm like, I'm just not in for a good fucking, a good mm. AV live show. Well, when I, when I saw Ed Sheeran there, the sound engineer had it so fucking loud that my ears hurt. And he's right. a solo acoustic guitarist, singer songwriter. Like that was the loudest show I've ever heard. Fuck. Yep. And, and that would have been his cause, touring engineer as well that yep. he takes all around the fucking world. And it's because he plays through a loop pedal and his loops get really loud when he layers and layers and layers. 
okay. But fuck, it was too when bad. When was that? Man. This was 2012, maybe? Okay. The forum, the forum is fucking sick. The Forum is a great venue. The Forum is and amazing. I saw Jimmy Eat World there and they had the best live sound I've ever heard for that size venue. Yep. Um, yep. Right, I'm the just gonna, is a great venue. Gonna, Davey, <clears throat> what, what do you reckon venues? I'm going to run you through the smaller venues in Melbourne and you just go yay or nay on them. So we've got the Corner Hotel. Yeah, your Corner nay. Hotel's awesome. Awesome. Love the it. Fucking yep. The pillar right in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> Circle pit around Iconic. it. Iconic. We both played there. <laughs> Yep, 100%. Street, I've paid, I've paid there, there, there a few times. Done the sound there? North yep. Social Club? Uh, I've only watched a gig there once, and it wasn't bad. Recently, we did, they yeah. read a whole heap of their sound stuff. They've got a dope board in there now. Sounds a lot better than it did four years ago. Um, well, I haven't been there since then. My beef with them is they fucking renovated the front bar. It used to be a good dive bar with free yeah. pool where fucking yep. scumbags like me could hang out on a Monday night and fucking go to Monday night mass and they just made it super clean and super hipster. Really? And even the security guards are working. They're like, man, we lost all the fucking regulars because they yep. tried to make it nice. How dare they make it nice and get rid yeah, of all man. the scumbers? <laughs> Bad. Like, got, yeah, yeah, that's, that's I, a, we like the shadows. It's um, a crucial thing to think about when you're like planning of renovating. But band room's dope. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, decent. Cherry bar. Look... The sound there is terrible. Iconic. The sound is bad. Right. Absolutely terrible. Um, they they need a rework. The, the way that they've got everything rigged is they have the monitors up up on the roof, so it's terrible if you've got a mic pointing up. It's literally there's a very high chance of you getting feedback. So that's that's. I mean, it's it's for them to save space on the on the because they're limited with space on that stage. Mm. And they but had a whole really. heap of dramas over those apartments that went up behind them. Yeah. I know that they funded yeah. a new wall out back to try to stop sound. Yeah. I mean, they they work really hard and they're an iconic music venue yeah. in Melbourne. Iconic. And they, they, they pride themselves on being, you know, a place to go to for rock music. So I love that about them. Yeah. I, yeah props to them. Hot tip. If anyone's touring, if any rock bands that you <laughs> fucking love, Foo Fight, if anyone's touring, you can go to, go Cherry, to the Bar. Cherry Bar before their Melbourne show and you'll find them. Yep. Um, Tony Hawk, like <laughs> literally, go, yep. go to their Cherry Bar before their yeah, show right. and you'll find them. Oh uh, yeah, I think that was Lady Gaga. Yep. That, all of them. Yeah, yeah, she did a spontaneous, a spontaneous like, thing couple there. of songs there. That being said, though, just so I can rant about something, if you buy a fucking apartment near a live venue that is has been there forever, like right, and then you complain about the noise, go go hang yourself. Well, you got to you think fuckers. about you got to think about the people that are doing that. They're, those are people that are buying up those properties with intent oh, to rent it out. So they're not thinking about that. Still. They're thinking about getting money. I hate from, those people so know. much. But that's right. that's life though, you know. So you've got to do what you can as the venue owner. And sure, money can be tight. But if you're in the middle of the city, there's noise restrictions. You know, <laughs> like it's simple as that. Let's keep going down this list. The tote. Tote, they had a they closed down <laughs> for ages and they had a reno. They used to be uh call what, what I mean they were known for having the sticky floor. Yeah. Oh, it's still there. I they, mean uh, last didn't time they, they get rid of the a, carpet? Nah, carpet's still there and carpet's sticky still as ever. There. There's still a dog who's in there. Great for Wednesday night punk bands, like I don't I, it's you don't you're not gonna go to the tote because it's the fucking cleanest place. You're and gonna you're not gonna go, gonna the go there to the see like a a decent band. Just Generally speaking. Wow. <laughs> well, no, nah, that's that's yeah. I mean that was wrong. But it, it's a bit it's, amateur. No, no, own it. You heard it here first. Yeah, you play the tote, you suck. <laughs> like you'll, you'll I've played there and I suck. <laughs> yeah, you will you see stuff that's not polished around the edges. Yeah. If Good you want bad, that, if that's what yeah. you're into. It's, it's, yeah. It's grungy. Yeah. yeah. So what I said was, yeah, yeah. probably. Uh, the Gasso, the Gasso Amador Hotel. Yep. Good stuff. Good. Um, I saw Northeast Party House there. Yeah. And they bring their own fucking lights energy. and and shit. Sean, he's a fucking killer sound engineer. Their light show... Sorry, Northeast Party House. Their light show is so much better than their... Fu- like, their light show is amazing. I yeah. was like, holy shit, this thing is spectacular. Is that the gas And I was like, damn, like, you could have sat there in silence in for 40 minutes. And I would have been like, this thing is fucking <laughs> out of control. Lighting's a good thing that we haven't touched on. Oh. Lighting can make such a big difference to whether a band looks good or yep. not. It's just yep. a stagnant red light, or yep. even if it just moves a bit. Like uh, Northeast Party House at the Gasso, fuck their light yeah. show was so dope. Yeah. They, I mean, they, they focus a lot. And they were on... sick live, super tight band. Yep. But that light show behind them, I was just like, fuck, dude, I'm sold. Like yeah. you could, yeah. put, you could. They're a good band. They're a really, really good band. Well, there's another thing. Like your stage performance 
can also be boosted by your well, effects. Yep. Honestly, if you are a band that stands there and doesn't do much, which is fine. I think, in my opinion, it's, it's better to focus on the music than your movements. So if your music is on point and your movements on, and stuff like that is, is less uh, appetizing, I don't know what the word would be, less appealing, then I'm, I'm, I back that. You got to focus on getting your music right. If you can jump around and play the music well, then jump around. If you jump around and your music sucks and it throws you off, yep. don't jump around. But lighting is something that can make a huge difference to that performance. You know, if you stand around, and you don't play much, but your music's really energetic. Get someone on lighting because mm. that'll make such a difference to how it looks. Was it like two thousand and one Big Day Out when Blink played? Yeah, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. There's one of the 2000. early, one of the early, yeah, 2000, one of the early big day outs when Blink were playing. They were there. playing in the middle of the day. Yep. But talking about jumping around, fuck, I don't think Tom hit fucking four nah, notes nah, nah. correct in order <laughs> that whole set. Like he's jumping around, it's sick. But you listen to like even the intro, what's my age again? And these tracks that are like, you can't you play it. Yeah. Cannot play it for shit. Yeah. But they were never known as being good live. Yeah. Uh, long play. I, I have not heard I don't of think long play. play. I don't know. It's on this list. I haven't. I don't think I've ever, I've ever been there. No, uh, no, all right. no, I haven't heard of it. Uh, the Workers Club. Yeah, I've played oh, Workers yeah. Club a few times. I fucking love the Workers. It's another yeah. small club that is. Um, it has decent sound if you can get a good sound engineer. Actually, they just change it. It yeah. used to be it used to be bad. We when I was doing the sound there, we you used to be able to pick up AM radio through the earthing of the thing. Like, oh, really? yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but they've tweaked it. They've tweaked it now. Yeah. Dan, who runs it, is fucking sick. Um, workers club. Yeah. yeah. Back the workers club. Yep. And they're very, they're, and for back in the day, everyone at the workers club, I'm sorry for all the stickers. They're good. They're good to the bands as well. They have a good, uh, relationship with bands. I think it's terrible when you have a venue that, um, doesn't take the time to be good to the bands. You know, if you've got someone like, like they don't exist anymore, but the barley corn, they oh, were, yes. I mean, it was a shit venue. It was a shit venue, but you would always play there as one of your first shows just because it was free to hire. I think everyone, oh, right. every band in Melbourne, their first show was at the Barleycorn. Yeah. And I think and now I'd say it's shift to that, um, I don't give a fuck. I'd, Id Gaff. Id Gaff. No, they're what's call, it called They're now? called um, the Mr. Boogie, Boogie Man Bar. Shitholes. <laughs> anyway, they're it's, terrible. Yeah, terrible. But, but you've gotta yeah. Play, you've got to play. That's where you open your fucking apprenticeship. The, the Barleycorn, they ha this sound, it was run by... The, uh, the dude and his wife and the dude was the sound guy and the wife was the bartender. Both of them shitheads, like the worst people ever. And the lady was like so negative. She told us on our first show as Jack Smash, me and Maddie Zola at the bar and we were like, yo, do we get a tab here? Do we get a rider? And she was like, huh, a rider? What do you mean? And we were like, well, we're playing here. We're going to bring people. She's like, if you can bring people, I'll laugh or something like that. And we were like, Maddie's like, I can guarantee you we're getting a hundred people through the door tonight. And she's like, Meh. and we did. And then, yeah, she finally gave us beers, but to treat a band like that yeah. is the worst. And the sound guy called us cunts and this and that, like he was a what? fuckwit. Yeah. He was a fuckwit. And he was like, oh, we played a What's Sunday gig there. What's that place called now? Uh, it's still a barbecue, corn, but they only do um, accommodation for like, um, uh -huh traveling people and stuff like that right. backpackers so avoid yeah, yeah. Well, it's, fucking, it's not a live oh. venue anymore but yeah. fuck don't be a cunt to if yeah. you're running a venue take the time to be good to the bands yeah. and they'll want to come back word spreads quick man the fucking industry is fairly small everyone talks to each other what's what's the, like why do that when the band is is has the say on who brings the people in generally mm. speaking for for small venues the yep. band are the ones that are... And even if you on treat that, your people like shit, they're not going to want to bring people correct. to your bar. And Like not. on that, all of the... Anyone's gigs and shows starting out for the first like two years are predominantly your fucking mates or your one yep. degree of separation. 100%. Um, and then like even... So when DYE, when we were starting, Zol, he'd, like, he'd, we'd bring down people. So yep. it would be like, yo, everyone... Let's go fucking hammer drinks at this bar yep. while we fucking play. Yeah. So then suddenly we knew we were going to bring 100, 150 yep. people who all drink. It's not like, hey, man, let's go down and fucking watch this show and then leave. Like, we go down and fucking well. drink. Yeah. And that's what it was. So it was like, if you get on well with the bar and they just They'll keep feeding you. you pieces, like, dude, we'll, don't worry about advertising, dude. We'll bring you your fucking customers and they're going to pound drinks. Yep. Like, why the fuck wouldn't you go back? And at the same time, like, when people treat you like that, it's like, fuck, dude, no one's an idiot. We know what yeah. we're bringing down to this fucking venue. 
I'll just go somewhere else. Yep. And you know that's got to affect your performance as well. Like if we're going back to the whole oh, yeah. what makes a good performance, if you're going up and your sound guy's being like, you're a bunch of cunts. It's like, well, cool. I'm not yeah. going to try. Thanks for the confidence boost right before I went yeah, yeah, yeah. like, um, What a fucker. Bringing people to shows is super important. And um, the, the response that you get playing live when you're in front of 100 people, oh man, it's, it feels so good. So like, it's so funny, like, there was an analogy that um, one of my friends uh, told me back in the day and he was talking about bands that, that don't want to get big. And it's like, are you kidding me? Like, oh, it's oh, so... whose phone is that? Oh. We'll pause this for a Hello, second. Hello, mama. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, sweet. I'm just coming out. <laughs> All right. Well, um, Ben's gone. Well, I'll be back. Just going to get the front door, everyone. Tell, you, I'm just going to yeah. run you... I mean, like, that... What was I saying? I was saying something that... I, don't know, I was, I was on a good tangent. <laughs> anyway. I'm going to run you through more more stuff. Just say yeah on anything. Howler. Everyone loves Howler. Howler, I've never been. You've never been no, Howler? No, I know, and that's Everyone bad. loves Howler, man. Yeah. I've, uh, when I was going to start booking bands before I started here, I was, I was thinking about being a band booker. Mm. Their um, communication and their package of, of how they book bands and stuff like that, top notch. Like the best, the best in the in the local scene, hundred percent. All right, dope. One of my favorites, Boney. Boney, yeah. Oh, used to yeah. be called Pony. Used to be called Pony. Hey. hey. Um, yeah. For fucking... everyone watching this, Mama's just joined us here, Mama Lisa. She just walked in the door now. You can't <laughs> see her, but she's here. Yeah, um, so I mean, yeah, bony. Good time if you can get drunk. I, yeah, if I not, do. don't play there. Yeah, <laughs> I like I love bony just because it's fucking filthy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they let you get away that's, with that's you. their reputation. Yeah, <laughs> they let you get away with, with fucking murder upstairs. Yeah, uh, and the prince's band room. Yep, that's great a venue. great venue. venue. Except they Amazing just rent, they just changed it. They renovated okay. that upstairs as well. They moved the bar and shit around. That's good though because it was a long room, like wide. It was a wide room, so mm -hmm. if you were Standing on one side of the of the venue, you would only be able to hear the band members that were playing on the left side of the stage. If you're standing on the right, same thing. Like you wouldn't be able to get a good mix right. in the crowd. So maybe that's a good thing. Yeah. Actually, we saw Les and Jake there and this ties in hand. Dope. Fuck, live show was sick. Like they just fucking party on stage. They yep. can't get on, on stage and, and drink with them. Like it was fucking Their vocals good. are on point as well. So, But after the show was hanging out with a few of them. There's a few, there's about three or four of us left there. We're chilling with them and fucking sorry, let's and Jake, man, but the band were just dicks. They weren't signing yeah. autographs for cunts. I think this was like their 20 year anniversary from when they, when they dropped um, their first album. So it was, it was like, fuck, you guys haven't had a job for 20 years. You're touring around. Not that fucking big. Fuck in Australia, sign some fucking autographs for people, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. All right. So let's wrap it up. So let's go five points. Good performance, five points, bad performance what to avoid, what to do. The music's got to be the primary concern. If you, you got to be tight. Yeah. Let's leave music. that out though. Cause I'm going to assume if you're going to a live show, you like the music. No, but you have to be good at. I oh, have that. to be clean at that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. See what you got to be good at your music first. That has to come first in my opinion. Yep. Um, so blink wouldn't be good on your radar. <laughs> not, not as, well, they've got another aspect to it, which is comedy. Yep. So that's something that they pride themselves on being funny. Not so much anymore, but I'm sure they're way better now as a live band than yeah. they were when they were oh, focusing on the comedy. The whole dynamic of that band has shifted. So, music, uh, you go next. Um, crowd participation. I like them recognizing there's a crowd enough so that you feel part of it, but also not that they dictate their live show over that over the crowd. Like that's when I think you can see bands who rock fucking forty, fifty thousand people, and it feels intimate because they made you feel like you're there. Yeah, and they're talking I, directly to you. Yeah. Yep, yep, that's so a good think, one. Confidence. Mm. Confidence yeah, is a big one. Don't apologize. If you fuck up, own it. Just yep. be like, yeah, man, we fucked up. We're, we're the band. You're here to see us. Yep. It is what it is. I, I yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a good thing that you can do and there's a bad thing. You know, saying sorry is one of the worst. And, and being confident if, uh, you know, you're, if you like the song, tell the band that you like the song. <laughs> tell the crowd that you like the song. Why not? Yeah. You're like, man, I love this song. I'm so excited to play this for you now. Yep. Something like that, you know. Whatever it is, just be actually confident. even on that something that just popped in my head as you were saying that is that I don't like is backstories about why you wrote this song. Like, yeah, no, I'm not against that. Yeah, yeah I think if it that. takes about it, I don't. There's I was, times when I watch it. If you're if you're a singer songwriter, that's one of the key things that you need to do in your shows. Tell the backstory about the song. See, is it? Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Hundred percent. 
See, it's Mama like, agrees. Like if you, if you're I go to see a minority fucking, here, my friend. And, my, and, and that's fine. I might be. So I'd look at it. If I go to see a play or something, the director doesn't walk out in between <laughs> sets and he's like, now before act two, this is what I was thinking when my girlfriend dumped me and I wrote this fucking... It's like, you you don't, don't talk to the director though. Yeah. He's not on stage. And they totally do. They come out at the end and they talk about... Do they? Yeah. No, they don't. Yeah, Q&As. Dude, I got a lot of friends in musical theatre. <laughs> Bring them uh, in. We're gonna have we a podcast. We need to talk about them. encores. What are your thoughts on oh, encores? Oh yeah, encores. Fucking a. Love an encore. Yeah, and, and people like, are people are whinging well. about it on social media these days. I'm like, you go fuck yourself. No, <laughs> the band goes off. Let the fucking lights go down. Let the chant. Hopefully, your band name is something good that a crowd of people can chant. The first song back from an encore is crucial. Big. Like it has to be one of the biggest songs that you. And have. medleys, medleys are dope. Working a medley somehow, it's just fucking sick. Just keeps action going. Yeah. Love a medley. Yeah, you don't expect it, do you, when you see a band do a medley of like five it's of their so songs? Like, it's just fuck, it's so front good. Front foot action. It's just yeah, there's no yeah, breaks. So we it got, keeps going. We got three good points. Now, let's just give us some bad ones. Main things to avoid. Oh, wait, no, we already did that, didn't we? Yeah, we've, we've done, done a bit both. We've done both. Okay, whatever. We're going to just gonna wrap it up there. <laughs> <laughs> good work, Davey. <laughs> Try <laughs> to keep track of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, thanks for listening. Cool, thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching and listening. Uh, hit us up, socials, yep. all that sort of stuff. And shout outs again to Madison and her coffee mug. Yep. Just get, we'll make that sure that I'm out. really in trouble for showing this on the internet. Nice. There you go, Bob. <laughs> it's your face on a mug. <laughs> thanks for watching. Thanks.